we would hit July and I would be lying at wake at night, starting to worry about November, December, January, and February. Funny, when I think back to my painting company in Chicago, we were doing three to 400 jobs a year. We'd be booked out all the way into the fall and we would hit July and I would be lying at wake at night, starting to worry about November, December, January, and February. So I always found that July is a great time to evaluate where you're at with your marketing, uh, what your plan is for the months that are up and coming. And so there's four things here that I want to uh, talk about with you guys to make sure that you can be ahead of the curve with this and not have any issues. What determines whether or not, oops, there's a typo. It's because administrative is not my strength. What determines whether or not your business lives or dies? What do you guys think? Put it in the box. We got money. We got leads. We got the phone ringing. It's all the above because, guys, leads produce sales. Sales is oxygen. All right? If you don't have sales, your business suffocates, and you cannot have enough sales if you don't have enough leads coming in to your business. And I, I know I'm the one that's pretty consistently banging this drum. In fact, the people that work with me one-on-one uh, -on -one with one-on-one -on -one coaching, they will tell you that one of the first questions I ask them every week that I know is annoying is something along the lines of, hey, what's lead flow been like this week? Because I know that if we take our eye off of the lead flow uh, metric, that we're going to have a really hard time hitting the goals uh, that we have in our business, okay? So, um, so anyway, leads produce sales. You cannot have a sale without a lead, all right? You cannot breathe if you don't have money. So don't ever, 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 ever tire of having the how many leads conversation in your business. So guys, the biggest mistake that contractors make uh, year in and year out that I see is they're not marketing every day of the year. All right, type in the box a yes or a no if you've ever said this statement. You've said, I don't wanna get too busy, okay? Have you ever said that? I don't wanna have too much work. I don't wanna get too busy. Yep, Tim says, yep. All right, it's pretty common. It's pretty common for people to, um, worry about, oh my God, how am I going to do all the work if I sell too much? Guys, that's a way better problem to have, okay? Um, that's a way better problem to have than not having enough work. I would much rather apologize for not being able to get to somebody and give back a deposit check. That's a better problem than not having enough work. And so, um, don't ever think for a second that you are going to get too much work. It's not, it, it's impossible. Here's why it's impossible. Um, when you book out, let's say you get six to week, six to eight to 10 weeks out booked, every lead that comes in after that, you just add more money on the bid. All right. And you set those expectations when you're talking the motive and the yes and no, and you know, all those conversations that you guys have in the Shin Fu, you're setting those expectations and they're going to wait for you or they're not gonna wait for you. And if you sell the job, you're gonna sell it at a higher than 50% margin because basically you've, you've got a full calendar and the phone is ringing off the hook. The other mistake people make is they think that they're going to oversaturate the market. And I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more um, you know, here later today in this call. But guys, it is impossible for you for any of us on this call, it is impossible. We to oversaturate with your marketing. We live in a really, really big world. The internet is really, really big and all that other stuff. Guys, I could post a video for my business, your business, any, any business, every 10 minutes for the next 365 days, honest to God, and we still would not oversaturate our market. If anything, you'd be you know, brand in the shit your business.
business and I, all the eyeballs would be on you. All right, so don't make the mistake that too many, um, too many people make and that's not marketing their business every day of the year. And I'll take it even further that when you, um, when you go into business for yourself, your number one goal is to sell. Even if you're not the sales guy, even if you're not in charge of sales, even if you hired a few sales people on your team or whatever it is, you are still responsible overall for the marketing and the sales of the business. Okay, so hopefully we're clear on that. I don't have to beat that up anymore. I said there was gonna be four must do's if you are going to um, make sure that you're a marketing machine. Guys, number one is you gotta fix your first impression. Um, and there, here's just five quick ideas. And I'm going to show you an example of somebody's vehicle here in a minute. But guys, your company identity is, is everything. Um, and I know there's guys that have been in business forever that have a looking logo that they, they made from some clip art 20 years ago. And that's still, you know, working for you. Okay. Um, but I think it's a huge mistake in our day and age of social media and the web and content and, um, the type of clients you're trying to sell and things like that. I think it is a huge mistake to not invest heavily into your, the identity of your company. And what I mean is this, let me just pull up a couple things here. Uh, let me see, let's go to see if I can open up a window here. Guys, this year uh, was a company that I used to be a partner in many years ago. Um, this logo is a seven color logo, all right? Uh, we knew that if we named our company Jalapeno Paintworks, <laughs> that we had to really go all in on the identity, all right? Um, and so these are just samples of billboards that we had in town. This was one of our billboards. Uh, that was one of our trucks, which honestly is a pretty, sh it's catchy and stuff, but I would have wrapped it. Knowing what I know now, I would have wrapped it a lot more. But guys, everything is consistent. It's bright. It's in your face. You can't miss it. Um, you know, we had themes for the holidays and, you know, we would switch out the billboards and the things we would do online and social media things and, and all this other stuff. Guys, my point here is this simple logo. Uh, I want to say uh, back in the day, this was, uh, would have been 20, 2000. Um, four, maybe 2004 ish, right in there. Um, the, just the basic logo with the, the name and the little dude here, it's a seven color logo. And I want to say we paid, I don't know, three, $4,000 for our company identity. And then we invested in a designer that we worked with all the time that gave us, um, uh, you know, everything we created from, from the shirts our guys would wear. I talked about employee appearance here to our uh, website, to the vehicles, uh, everything that came out from, from our company. Guys, the identity was unmistakable that this is who we were, okay? And we're sending a message. Now, you got to also remember, type in the box, yes or no. Do you want to work with people that have the money to spend on your service and money's not that big of a deal to them. Yes or no? <laughs> okay. That was a quick yes, right? We all have that. I'm telling you right now, the, and I just did a YouTube video and it's coming out later this week on this. One of the big issues that people have with growing their business is they're not sending the right message to their ideal clients with their company identity. You guys, I don't mean you guys, but I'm just saying guys go way too cheap. They try to throw something together and they don't understand that that is part of that first impression. People with money in most cases want, like when, when they see that first impression, you know, if they see a rusted out truck versus a really sharp truck with a nice wrap, it sends a message and builds trust. If I wrote a blog years ago about this uh, carpenter that I saw and you know pardon my expression here but I'll just say it he had a pair of those his back bumper remember you ever see those things where guys have those and he had heavy metal stickers all over his truck and he was cranking the music super loud I'm all for 
you know, heavy metal music. I'm all for cranking the music and, and things like that. But guys, the message that he was sending with his business is typically not the message that you want when you're going after a certain clientele. So you need to make sure that your identity, your company name, all those things are consistent with the type of customer you want. Another thing that's important, and this is part of the company identity, I wish I could find the company. I couldn't find them. I think they're out of business. But there was a company, I think they were called Affordable Luxury Painting. Let me say that again. They were called Affordable Luxury Painting. What is wrong with that? And I don't know if that was their company name or their, their tagline, but it was one of the two. Okay? Yeah, Sebastian says it doesn't make any sense. Okay? You, you can't have both. Okay? So guys, your identity is huge. You want your identity, your vehicles, your website, the shirts your employees are wearing, the yard signs, the door hangers, your business cards, your social media banner, and the pages and everything that comes out, Instagram, everything in that first impression should be like, man, we are dialed in and we have our act together. And the, last, the other thing here I want to touch on is that first impression of communication with, it, with your company. All right. Is it easy to communicate with you? Is it easy to send you a message? Is it easy to get on the phone? Is it easy to get a question answered? Okay. Then when somebody takes that step with you and they decide to hire you, is it easy to schedule? Do you keep them in the loop? Guys, all of this is part of that, that impression that you are making. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. So let me show you a before and after. So I had a guy come on here. His name's Kevin. Kevin came out here um, earlier this year. There, I'm trying to make this bigger. There we go. That was his truck, and I got on him about this. It's called Beaver Building and Remodeling. He's out on the East Coast. Super cool dude. He's kicking ass now. He came out, spent a coaching day with me uh, with some follow-up calls and some things like that. This was his truck. Last week, this is his truck. So, who's driving down the road, making a first impression? Who are you most likely to give some attention to? All right? I think this is an absolute phenomenal job. His website needs some updating. He's still not there yet and all that other stuff, but it's a fun name. I love creative names like that. Um, I love the fact that he went all out. I think he dropped probably, you know, three, 4000 bucks on this. Guys, I'm telling you right now, it sends a much better message. Like here, you can't read. You can't read the writing here. If I were to zoom in on it real big, which I'm not able to, sorry. All right, you want to make sure it's good fonts that are easy to read. Okay, oh, he said it was 2,500. All right, Micah, cool, thanks. All right, so guys, um, one of the things I wish I would have done more uh, was gone bigger with wraps on vehicles and more vehicles on the street because every truck that I would have on the road, um, it's getting, you know, 60, 80, 100,000 impressions a day. And especially when you have a creative wrap like this and things like that. So guys, please um, invest in that identity of your company.